What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Callie. Um, I'm going to try to redo our kitchen somewhat. Um, I painted the cabinets a while back, so I need to touch those up and seal them. I never put a top coat on top of them. So today I'm going to focus on the countertops, and then probably another day I'm going to work on the backsplash. But I will bring you along, along for the whole entire process, and you'll see how it turns out. So I'm going to be working with things that I already had on hand. Sorry, my phone is going off. Um, I'm going to be working with things that I already have on hand. And then I did run to Walmart and I will show you quickly what I got. So here are the things that I picked up for this project. Um, I got some foam brushes for the top coat. And I have never used this top coat. Um, it is the Watco Super Glaze. And I got it in Crystal Clear. I have to mix it so hopefully I will not mess that up. I got three of these little measuring cups. They were like 90 some cent a piece so I figured I would have that instead of having to look for something. Some painter's tape. These were 90 some cent and I just got some cheap little plastic sp spoons to like mix this together. I got two little containers and these little things i just saw someone else use these and i thought they were really cool so i grabbed two of them because you never know when you're going to need them they're little like handheld painters and then these are the things that i already had on hand so i have a tablecloth to just lay out on my table so that way i don't spill paint all over it um i have the light gray color that is on all of my walls in the house and then I have a darker gray that I actually painted my cabinets with and I'm gonna use that to attempt to do the marble pattern and I'm gonna paint over my countertops with this kills white just to get a fresh start this is just an extra little thing of white in case I need it I have a paintbrush a little sanding block a little water spritzer and already had this little roller and these little rollers to go on it for the white so I'm gonna give you a quick look at my countertops right now um, so we live in a mobile home and whenever we first moved in they were like this weird purple color they were disgusting looking anyway now when I first moved in I painted this with like some kind of stone spray paint and as you can see it's peeling up it's been getting on my nerves for a while i just haven't had the um time to think about redoing it but i'm sick of it it's looking gross there's a little hint of what they looked like before we did anything to them and i have already done so there's a little glimpse of how it's all looking I've already attempted to do the contact paper and it just peeled up it my husband said it looked like I had wrapped our countertops in Christmas paper so we're gonna hope that it doesn't look like that this time okay so I'm gonna start by taking everything off of my countertops and giving it a good wipe started sanding and then we will tape out the sink and maybe right here where the fridge butts up to the countertop because I can't move this big thing by myself and we might also touch up some of this stuff which I'm going to cover this up later I'm going to redo the backsplash too so you'll see that in just a little bit I just realized I probably shouldn't have wiped these off first because I'm 
fixing to mess it all up. Whatever. You live and you learn. figured out that I have a very red cheek that wasn't supposed to be what I was talking about anyway I figured out that this sandpaper is not cutting it like this stuff is not coming up so I'm gonna clean it again and hope that the glaze that goes over top of all of the work that I do is going to cover it up and make it feel super smooth but anyway this is what happens whenever you're not professional. You just live and you learn and you figure out how next time not to do things. And you figure out what works, so that's what matters. I'm gonna clean this and second time. At least I got some of it off. I mean, better than none. Now that everything is wiped down, I'm going to try to tape out the sink and over here where the fridge meets the countertop. Kills a good shake. You know what? I'm going to start with. Ah! I'm going to start with this brush. Okay, so I started painting and I saw that this little line, this crack right here is not going to, um, I can't really paint that. I should have got some kind of filler, but I didn't. So I'm just going to put a few more screws in it and I don't think you'll be able to tell from, like unless you're up close, you're not going to be able to tell that I have screws in the side of this.
a different shirt that I didn't care about because my other shirt was one of my favorite tied of t-shirts and it was getting paint on it. So, Okay, you guys, so I have a slight change of plans. Um, this was my backup plan for if I didn't think the marble would work out. And I just don't think it is because, see, all of this texture is kind of bubbled up. It's where I couldn't really get the, um, the first time that I initially painted these, the paint had a texture to it, like a stone type texture. And yeah, I just couldn't get it to come up with the sander, so... I painted over it and it's still shining through so I think originally I was going to do like the little lot like a the gray veining that would make this look like a white and gray marbled countertop but I have got some natural sponges and I think I'm going to sponge this to make it like a faux granite type look so that's what we're going for I will show you the process of my backup plan Okay, so I've got my four plates here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my sponge. Actually, I only need three plates. I'm gonna use the, the little container with the kills for the white, since I've already used it. Okay, so I'm gonna see how this cuts. I can just rip it. Yeah. I'm just gonna rip this into several pieces because I want to have little pieces in case I soak one too much. I can kind of switch it out if I need to. Okay. I think that's good. All right. So I'm just gonna do my first color, which is the light gray and this is the Gleden. it's semi gloss and it the color is silver reflection I'll shake it because i don't have a paint stir improvise my friends improvise whoa Okay, so I'm gonna start with my first color, which is this light gray. And by the way, if this is annoying you, I get it. This is driving me crazy too. I really wanna rip it out. But I think I'm gonna have to get a new one or just screw this into the wall. Um, I might actually paint over this with white. I'm a little nervous. Okay. Too much
the second color of paint is the middle shade. Okay, here goes the second to darkest color. So kind of a medium shade. I'm trying to be lighter handed with the darker because I don't know, I guess I can always go back over and lighten up, but I'm just gonna see what happens. I've definitely figured out to just dab it versus dragging it because dragging it makes it kind of have streaks and granite isn't streaky. It's kind of more splotchy and it's kind of cool because it's just kind of coming up like darker in some areas, lighter than others. But that's fine because that's the way real granite is. So, so far so good. All right, here I go for the darkest shade. I'm probably gonna use, let's see what this looks like. This says chalkboard paint. Let me see what the color looks like. Oh yeah, it's black. I think that I'm going to use a smaller piece so that I can control it a little bit better. Okay, so here's what the dark is looking like. I'm a little, I'm trying to be gentle with it. It's kind of hard, um, cause sometimes the sponge wants to leave like a straight blob and it, it's kind of aggravating, but I'm gonna go back in and lighten it up. I want the depth of multiple colors, so I'm just gonna keep working with it until I get the look that I'm going for. Okay, so it's not done drying yet, but this is what the final product ended up looking like, and I think I'm going to really like it. It's just black, white, and some shades of gray. Here is the other side. There's kind of a comparison of what it look like with the art gray cabinets, black hardware, and then the faux granite countertop. So the next step is to seal it, and then I will start working on the backsplash. Okay, so here is the sealant that I'm going to use, or top coat. <clears throat> Again, I'm using the Watco Super Glaze. I've never used it. It says that one pour is as thick as 75 coats of varnish, so I'm hoping that that's a good thing. All right, it says one to one ratio. So I got three, four cup um, measuring cups. So I'm, it says to pour one in one cup, one in the other cup, mix them separately, then add them together and mix them together. So. Let me get, okay, this is the soup. Oh, this is part B, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna do one cup of part B. Oh, I hope this is gonna be enough. Stuff smells like Tootsie Rolls. Woo! That one don't. <laughs> Alright. One cup of... Part A. And 
I just wanted to start out with one cup of each. That way I could kind of see how it works and how far it kind of spreads and stuff. Okay. So I mix these separately. You don't know how bad I really just want to dump both of them in the same container and call it a day. But at least I can say I follow directions if this goes wrong. Okay. So I'm going to pour one into here. Wow, this stuff is pretty thick. Okay. Pour the other one in here. Okay. Now I'm going to mix it. Okay. It says to pour. That's what I'm going to do. Wow, this stuff is super thick. So I finished the top coat. It is very shiny as you can see. And I noticed that, let's see if I can see any streaking. Um, I noticed that whenever I was using this foam type of brush, it just really pushed around the product. And so I went in with this and kind of swiped over everything and then I went in with the roller and I rolled it and it kind of smudged some of my coloring together but I honestly just think it made it look even more realistic so I'm fine with it so I'll show you the end whenever it's completely dry and then after I get my backsplash put up I will keep you updated throughout that process too probably be tomorrow whenever I do my backsplash because I'm whooped and I'm hungry and I gotta go get the kids so catch y'all tomorrow good morning so it's the next day and I want to show you what this is looking like so that Watco product it feels really good it's like really thick and smooth but you can see um, let me try to open this blind You can tell it's kind of, it looks lumpy, but it's not to the touch. So here are the subway tiles that I ordered. I ordered them from Amazon. So they come in a pack of 10 and I got two packs. I'm hoping that with this small of a area that that will cover. So we'll see. I might stick one or two right now and then I'm going to wait on Tyler to get home this evening. And when the kids go to bed, we're going to try to tackle it all together so it's just quick Hard to cut.
Okay guys, the countertops are done and the backsplash is put up. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick little look of how it ever, everything looks all together. So here is the countertop and I kind of switched some things up. You can see the backsplash we put up all the way around. So there's like a little shot of those two together. And this is a mutant. We'll put it up all the way back through here. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If you like these kind of videos and you enjoy this type of content then please give me a thumbs up leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos and we'll see you in the next one bye